Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and greetings to everyone. Welcome to our storytelling series. In today's episode, we will be sharing about how the English language evolved in America. Hmm, sounds interesting. But wait, who are the presenters? Of course, it will be me, Hafizin, Nadia, Jamila, and Adriana. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Okay, next slide. Alright, before we start today, let me tell you the overview of our story. What are the contents? First of all, we will start off with the origin of the English language, the words formed along the journey, and finally, the expansion of English. Okay, now let's sit back and relax by enjoying, your, by enjoying our story on English in America. Next slide. First and foremost, I will be telling about the origin of English in America. Next slide. Okay, it started from thousands of years ago until the 5th century in times of Shakespeare, which began from the Germanic dialect. English has traveled to India, West Indies, Australia, and to America. In November 1620, the Pilgrim Fathers landed in New England and created a settlement in Plymouth Plantation. Squanto, I would say he is the most important person in this story. He was introduced by Savage to the Pilgrim Fathers to help them to continue living. They pick up some English words to communicate with each other. At the end, he has successfully taught them on how to farm and make their own food. Next slide. The settlers have formed several new words. But why? The settlers needed new words to describe the animals and plants that they have written to the native language. Here are some of the examples of new words created by the, the settlers. For the first one, we have skunk. Skunk is an animal derived from the local language. And the second one, squash, to describe variety of pumpkin. Squaw, to describe a young woman. And papoose, to describe a little child. For your information, English borrowed a lot of words from Latin, Danish, French, and many other languages. The English language also borrowed dozens of words from Indian words to make it as an English word. Next slide. As time passes by, English has eventually spread to many parts of the world. Hence, the very in pronunciation had occurred to the extent some words have different meanings even though it is actually the same word. Let us see some examples provided here. Okay, for the first one, we have tomato for English and tomato for American. However, in some words, the meanings are also different with one another. For example, here we have English, they describe them as shop, but American, it, they describe them as store. And lumber in English means rubbish, and on the other hand, it means cut timber. The final example is haul, in English means to move by force, and in America means to transport in a vehicle. In the 18th century, the absence of pronunciation and regional dialects have been noted approvingly. It is fascinating actually to see that how some words produce different meanings in different places. Next slide. There's another foundation of the English language, which is the blue book in the picture right here, which is written by Noah Webster. But you must be wondering, like, who is Noah Webster? Okay, Noah Webster is actually a school teacher who published the Blue Book. It was regarded as the American spelling book or blue back spell, and, is the, and it is the most influential book in America. The book was sold at 60 million copies at 14 cents per book. Wow, that's amazing. Noah Webster does not only influence on the pronunciation part, but also in terms of spelling to make it standardized. So here are the examples of the standardized spelling. We can see here the um, spelling that contains the alphabet of OU. The Noah Webster will eliminate the alphabet of U by spelling it 
as honor h o n o r and color c o l o r the next example is double alphabet for the example of traveler the spelling will be t r a v e l e r and wagon w a g o n and the spelling that contains the alphabet e r will be replaced as r e for example here theater T H E A T R E and center C E N T R E, and for the final example which contains the alphabet C E at the end, No Webster will replace that with D E F D E F E N S E, defense. All right. But ah uh, next slide. But actually, the Americans felt that they kept the English language pure for two hundred years by still using some of the English drop words. So here are the examples of English drop words that still been used by Americans at that time. Here we have greenhorn, burly, deaf, scan, talented, and also sick. They denied that they were changing the language, and it went wild. Okay, my next presenter Nadia Akila shall continue the story of this journey with most pleasure. I welcome Nadia. Thank you, Afizin. So I will continue the story of the origin of American English. So the idea origin of American English came from the Lewis and Clark expedition. This expedition took place as an order from the president at the time, Jefferson. To explore the Louisiana Territory as it was acquired by U.S. in 1803, as you can see in the map, the Louisiana Territory is the green color, and the expedition took place from the Saint Louis on the pink color to the West Coast and back from 1804 to 1806. It was marked as one of the epic journeys in the history of exploration. During the journey, Lewis and Clark wrote daily journals during the expedition uh, to cap the experiences along the journey. As Lewis and Clark was the army of the frontier, therefore the language used in the journals were the practical language of the frontier. Enough the chit chat. Let's move on to the word formation. Next slide, please. There were. Two thousand new words recorded in the journal. Uh, the new words recorded can be categorized into four types. The first is it, the words derived from the native language of the people that they settle in. The words such as buffalo and also timber. Second, more obscure words like moose and persimmon. Third, words that match the this, the description of the things that they found. Like whippoorwill and also whip and also mockingbird. A mockingbird is a bird that loves to imitate other bird songs, so they name it mockingbird. And fourth, combine English words. They combine the existing English words such as buck and eye, and it become buck eye. And also bald and eagle, and it become bald eagle. Okay, the next slide. Next slide. Okay. Besides that, gambling and drinking activities also contributed to American English. These activities created new phrases, uh, such as from the word deal. It came the word square deal. It came the new phrases such as square deal, new deal, and also fair deal. For the drinking, it came the phrases keep a poker face and also scoops the jackpot. Next. White selling of alcohol also created a word like bartender and also bootlegging. From the Benjamin Franklin's list, there are two hundred and twenty nine terms from drunk, as people uh, they love to create new words while being drunk of the alcohol, such as he is halfway to Concord and also he sees two moons. That's all about the origin of American English and also the word formation. Let's move on to the next topic. Okay, moving on to the expansion of American English. The expansion of American English consists the story consists of the story about Joseph McCoy, William F. Cody, Buffalo Bill, African influence, and slavery. 
The first one, Joseph McCoy, is one of the famous American cattlemen. He had the idea to ship cattle on the railroad and sell them to the eastern state. This activity helped to boost and develop the country railroad industry. Travelers would sometimes introduce themselves as uh, with his name, and in turn, he began to introduce himself as the real McCoy. Then, how do we relate Joseph McCoy and the expansion of American English? Joseph McCoy gave the word give the world a catchphrase which is the cowboy he english had known the word cowboy since the 18th century but now it took a new currency in a new meaning he also turned the word cowboy into a national icon the expansion of in american english by the by joseph mccoy also lead to borrowing new words which is from spanish this is because during that time, cowboys had been working near the Mexican border for years, picking up Spanish words. Uh, for example, Spanish words like ranch, mustang, valerian, and delonso, which they used to rope cattle, and many more, all came from Spanish. Next, we have William F. Cody Buffalo Bill. He produced a colorful show colorful show uh, called Buffalo Bill's Wild West, which is one of the famous entertainment during that time. Uh, this is uh, this William Buffalo, this Buffalo Bill Wild West it also had an international reputation and helped create a lasting image of the American West. Then, how do we relate William F. Cody Buffalo Bill with the expansion of American English? He is responsible for the language of the West, has become the standard idea of what American English is, which completely overtaking the proper speech of the East. He began a line of Western meat that kept the language alive through countless books and films. Now, I'll pass the floor to Adriana Sofia to explain more about expansion of American English by African influence and slavery. Thank you, Jamila. Back in the 18th and 19th century, African people were being forced to become slaves. However, the bright side of the situation is that we can see the expansion of the English language, which, which was coming from several languages first before developing into the standard English that we speak today. Due to this unfortunate event, slaves had to find their own way to talk with one another. During that period, the language used was English, but it was heavily influenced by the African style of talking. The slaves find their tongue to communicate with each other, and this is the origin and this of the existence of Gula. Next slide, please. So what is Gula? Gula simply said Gula is the mixture of African and English language. Gula is a very distinct variety of English which originates from South Carolina Island. In other words, the Gula language is typically referred as Gichi in Georgia. It is technically known as the English-based Crowley language. Uh, created when people from diverse backgrounds find themselves thrown together in a situation that needs them to communicate. So how does Gula sound like? Gula is very similar to if or African-American vernacular language or known as Black English. Technically, if you have ever heard the way black people talk, you can easily imagine how does Gula sounds like. For example, black people always use fella, fakin, y'all, freaking, Emma, and hella. Other than that, in Gula language, there are also loan words that are coming from English language, such as koto means, koto means turtle, ono means you but in a plural form, nyam means it, and bakra means white man. Next slide, please. So how, uh, however, why and how does Gula come to exist? Gula exists as a result of kidnapping and isolating the slave for a very long period. During those days, Ivo Mandikas Maninkas and his friend were kidnapped and isolated together in an island for enslavement targets. This is where they tried to communicate with all the ability and knowledge they had from English, African and English language and mix them together for understanding purposes. Hence, Gula is the closest image we can get of the English of the language that had been used by the 
slave during that century. Other than that, during that time, slaves had to show their obedience towards their master by learning Christianity and Bibles had become the central to the life of slave. According to the slave, folk tales were not the only thing that filled free dreams of freedom. So during that time, slaves only depended on the Bible as they had been brainwashed to the point that they believed Bibles were the only reason they could escape and gain freedom. Lastly, uh, white Observers assume that black people were not good at speaking English language due to the way they speak. Hence, they were accusing the black people were just simply trying to copy the way white speakers talk and but fail in the process. Next slide, please. Here are some of the words that came into Gula from the African language with which have found their ways into the standard English language. For example, banana comes from Wolof language, which was spoken by the Senegal, and Wudu was traceable from an African word spinach, the language spoken by the Yoruba people. Other African words that regimented into standard English were zebra, gorilla, and chimpanzees. And for the musical terms, samba, mambo, bones, and bongo. African compound words were translated that give English terms like bath mouth and nitty gritty were originated as the term for the Greek. Next. So to conclude, American English shared from, shaped from different origins with the creation of the new words and the language expanded throughout different channels. That's all from us. Thank you.